nicely black male female. She's a tall woman. She's a tall woman. Um, we saw a really scary headline that the violence protesters, but what we didn't read were the many after reports that in fact had legitimate criticism of how law enforcement dealt uh, with mass assembly. Eight one three two three nine nine six six three. If you'd like to join this conversation, you can also email us at dj at wmnf dot org. And I think that Abby, you were going to add something to that. Uh, yeah, just to the caller's comment. I think you'll see a lot more mayhem in the papers than on the streets. Um, the The fact of the matter is that this the the fear mongering that goes on in the papers is what allows them to get away with this excessive. Um, security apparatus. Um, you know, the, the facts just don't bear out. We hear the same exact story every time in the build-up to one of these protests. We hear the anarchists are coming. There's a common th meme out there of bags of feces <laughs> being hoarded. Um, there's all these things, that, and it's literally a playbook that you see every time, and these things don't materialize. You know, you hear about Molotov cocktails, in, in, I, I can't think of any recent history of a Molotov cocktail that did not involve a paid police informant. So the, these things are for the large part manufactured, and, and as Heidi pointed out, the tragedy of it is they create such a difficult and oppressive environment that it actually discourages legitimate protests and it discourages free speech. And so, you know, that's the problem right there, that, that it's not, these things are based on fear, not fact. We'll go back to the phones. Um, Mark in St. Petersburg, you're on the air. What would you like to say? Doing just great. Good. Um, my name is Mark. I'm from St. Pete. There's so many issues I want to talk about, but I'm just going to focus on a couple of them. Um, yeah, $50 million on security for like five or six days in camp is ridiculous. Um, I, I'm a landscaper, and I bought a lawnmower uh, at this place in Pinellas Park. It's been in the shop three times in the last six months, and I called the guy, so the guy called the police on me harassing him. So I said, okay, well, I'll call the Better Business Bureau, and I'll protest in front of his store. I said, that's legal, right? And uh, the police officer said, oh, I, I don't know anything about the protesting laws. I'm not an attorney. You have to check with an attorney. And then we, we got talking later. And he's one of the cops from St. Pete in Pinellas Park that's going to be in Tampa controlling protesters. And he tells me that he has no clue on what the protesting laws are. And then how can he arrest protesters and what guidelines is he going to follow? Can I let Heidi? Heidi, do you have a response to that? Uh, let me give you a brief occupy example from New York um, a few months ago. Of protesters moved sort of from their downtown area up to a more centrally located Union Square. And when they did that, the police started enforcing uh, a curfew at midnight that they had never enforced before with uh, many, many hundreds of police and riot gear encircling the park. And then they started to bring in a cleaning machine and so they had to hose down the park, which they'd also never done before. But one night, a friend and I were there watching, and we saw the officers lined up, and we said something about, well, how does this, you know, take you away from your regular duties? And he said, well, this is a priority. And it was clear that he was following the orders of the long and that the city had made a determination that they were going to expend whatever number of million 
stop security events, they follow their orders, they may not be, I, I'm surprised that local police aren't familiar with some of the local ordinances, especially the ones that received so much media attention, because they were specifically tailored to this uh, event. Uh, but um, I think basically, whatever their individual views are, they're following orders, and this is a priority. Well, thanks for that call, Mark. And uh, this, that was the voice of Heidi Bogosian. She's the executive director of the National Lawyers Guild. Also with us is National Lawyers Guild Mass Defense Coordinator, Avi Hassan. And the number to call is 813-239-9663. You can also reach us at dj at wmnf.org. John, you're in Spring Hill and you're on the air. What would you like to say? Like this 